Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, Die Hard has returned. FFW Genesis has returned. But tonight is going to be a landmark night in FFW. Now, we all saw the titles contested at FFW Endgame. But tonight, on episode 11, every championship in FFW will be decided. Once again, just because tonight is a special event. So, I guess what we're going to do is we're just going to get this show underway. And I can't think of a better way to start the show than with the Adrenaline Championship matchup. So Takamuri, you're, you're in action up next. I hope you guys enjoy tonight's show. I know I enjoyed I'm going to enjoy it. So let's get the show underway. Let's get this thing rolling. Again, welcome to FFW Genesis. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Christopher Billings, the voice of FFW Genesis. And, uh, well, you just heard from Die Hard, the CEO of FFW. And basically tonight, every title in FFW will be contested. It will be on the line. And up first, we had the Adrenaline Championship. The young Takamuri getting ready to defend his championship again against a man that he faced at Endgame, against Kanji. These are both... Japanese-born wrestlers, Takamuri and Kanji, both from Nagoya, Japan. And uh, these, these two young men, they bring a specific flavor to uh, every match that they are in. And I definitely, I've got to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing these two, especially with our new show format that we're doing now. I, uh, I'm interested to see, can Kanji get it done tonight? He couldn't, Kanji came up short at Endgame, but tonight on Genesis, Kanji has a chance at Retribution and to gain the, the coveted Adrenaline Championship, which uh, has been held by people such as Orion James, uh, James Anderson, and uh, people of that nature. But uh, as you see, Kanji here, uh, his past uh, month and a half off, he's started to grow. He's grown his hair out a little bit, so his hair's a little bit longer. And uh, I, I hope... I hope that uh, the longer hair does not affect him in a negative way, but I think I think tonight between these two, Kanji and Takamuri, I think this is going to be a great match. And uh, like I said, both Japanese-born wrestlers, uh, their primary residencies are in Japan. So uh, you know, and, and we also have Kanji's cousin Masuma in action a little bit later tonight as well, but. Uh, Kanji versus Takamuri. This is going to be a rematch from uh, from FFW Endgame, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. And every championship in FFW is on the line tonight, and I can't think of a better way to start things off than with the Adrenaline Championship, uh, one of our most exciting divisions in FFW. The the lower weighted the lower weight class wrestlers. Uh, have so much intensity, so much everything when they when they wrestle, and uh, so it is time to get this matchup underway in just a few moments here. And uh, Kanji Takamuri, the FFW Adrenaline Championship, and here we go. And Kanji starts it with a side headlock, a side headlock takedown there, as uh, Takamuri oh received a a fist right to the forehead from Kanji, and this is what I, this is why. I love what we do, and now, as you see, Takamuri starting to gain some advantage, but Kanji turns it around into his favor, and uh, now Takamuri turns it around into his favor. And this is, oh, and a big shoulder thrust there from, from Takamuri, and this is what I love about uh, the adrenaline weight class wrestler, the, the adrenaline weight class wrestlers, because they, they have such uh, a unique skill set. Uh, they're such good uh, technical wrestlers and, and they're high flyers and they're fast and at the beginning of the match it may seem slow and uh, but then the pace will get picked up as you saw that snap there followed by that dropping fist from Takamuri and Takamuri here trying to show that he's no pain at all and a big back chop there from Kanji and that'll that'll definitely uh, that'll leave a big nice red mark on your chest the next morning you Takamuri's going to wake up and he's going to have a red, red chest. And another kick right to the chin there 
from, Ta from uh, Kanji to Takamuri. But Takamuri, though, showing no fear and resilience here against Kanji. And, and the same can be said about Kanji. Kanji's not backing down tonight. And Kanji bringing in Takamuri the hard way there. And for both of these young men, they, they both have such, they're so young in their careers yet. I mean, they, they haven't experienced everything that their careers have to offer, but they do so phenomenal together, um, you know, in their careers. And Takamuri, they're a beautiful snap suplex to Kanji. And now Takamuri stomping on the forehead. And uh, like I was saying, I mean, both Takamuri and Kanji still very young in their wrestling careers. Uh, and there's so much that can change and so much that can happen. And I, I believe that both of these young men have a very bright future ahead of them. And uh, Kanji now runs in. Big running drop kick there in the corner. Oh, and another drop kick. And that was a close range uh, aided air drop kick there. Sending Takamuri right to the mat. But Takamuri, though, he's, he's showing he has fight tonight. And that, that is uh, unique in itself. Takamuri is showing that, you know, he's not just a, a paper champion, so to speak. He, he's fighting, but will is Kanji going to be too much for Takamuri tonight as Takamuri here stretching those ropes, uh, trying to choke uh, Kanji up against the ropes, and Takamuri, they're dropping the uh, forearm right across the, right across the chin and the bridge of the nose. And now Takamuri again, that snapmare, and then the jumping fist drop. And the surfboard stretch here from Takamuri, and uh, this is this is what I this is what I'm talking about when I say that these wrestlers are so gifted. Uh, they they go out here day in and day out. Uh, they have no off season, and uh, a big clothesline there from Takamuri into the a very arrogant cover here one, and a one count for Takamuri as Kanji forcefully got his shoulders off the mat, but slow to get to his feet. And now, Takamuri, no, wait a second, Kanji reverses, big neck breaker there. A much needed momentum shift for Kanji. And uh, for Kanji, this could be his first, his first time ever winning gold. And it could be the Adrenaline Championship against Takamuri, who picked up a, a huge win over Kanji at Endgame. Uh, he beat Kanji via submission. We don't know if that's going to be the case tonight, but Takamuri, they're uh, wisely able to turn the favor back in, or turn the things around back into his favor. And now uh, Takamuri here, big standing back, a big knife edge chop there. And now Takamuri going to ascend the top rope here. Takamuri jumps off, big body splash, hooking the far leg here, one. And only a, a, a long one count for we're talking here and Kanji back to his feet. Kanji runs in, big shoulder tackle. Another shoulder tackle. And wait a second, Kanji here going to work on Takamuri. Kanji showing that he is ready. And, oh, Kanji with that point of that elbow right on the skull. And as you saw, Takamuri rolled right to the outside, just trying to separate himself from Kanji. And, and as you see, Takamuri, there are a series of uh, forearms right to the small of the back. And that's. That's not going to help you or anybody in that situation. As you see, uh, Takamuri on one knee, unable to uh, get back to his feet like he, uh, like any wrestler normally would. Uh, Takamuri may be feeling the effects of that elbow. He, he may be a little dazed and confused, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, a big monkey flip, and Takamuri's knee may have uh, buckled on the steel steps there. As you see, Takamuri's not getting up. He's just, he's sitting there. He looks like he's in a lot of pain right now. And uh, like I said, this could be Kanji's night, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a second, Takamuri wisely able to turn it back around into his favor. And Kanji, a big kick right to the chest. Wait a second, Kanji, he might, he's got him up. He's got him up in the... Package pile driver, and that's got to be it, ladies and gentlemen. Into the cover, hooking the far leg here. One, two, then almost a three count, but somehow, some way, Takamuri got his shoulders off the mat, and you saw the frustration. You can see the frustration on Kanji's face there, as uh, he was for sure that he had that. I mean, that, that was a 2.99 uh, pinfall count. I mean, that was 2.99 seconds right there. And a quick roll up, one, two. And again, Takamura able to get himself out. And as you see, Takamura slowly 
getting back to his feet here. He's he's had the work done to him, but Takimuri switches it around. Wait a second, Takimuri, big back chop. Wait a second, Takimuri setting something up here. Oh, I saw Tak Takimuri talked about this and uh, that rolling clothesline out of the corner there to Kanji, and that is not going to feel good for you or for anybody. And, and now Takimuri stalking Kanji here. He's got Kanji up on his shoulders and sending him in between the legs there. Takamuri hooking the leg here for the cover. One, two, three, and Takamuri able to retain his Adrenaline Championship. Barely. Kanji literally hit that package pile driver, sent Kanji to the mat. Kanji barely got his shoulders up. I, the damage was done when Kanji received that elbow right across the top of the, the top of his skull. Uh, you know, Takamuri was out of the ring on one knee. He was not instantly getting back to his feet. He was down. He was hurt. And I honestly think that Kanji should have taken advantage of that. But congratulations goes out to Takamuri tonight retaining his FFW Adrenaline Championship. And uh, for, for Takamuri, this could be a, a long title reign for this young man if if he can weather every storm that comes his way now uh, in keeping in tradition of our new show format ladies and gentlemen up next uh, we have another title match it is going to be the tag team championships they are going to be decided and this is the first time ever but we have Bryson and Mark Lester the current reigning uh, tag team champions they are facing a tag team that if I remember correctly, has never been offered a tag team opportunity. They've always came up short right beforehand. Uh, so for Bryson and Mark Lester, I hope that they've been doing their homework and, and don't think that they're too good to uh, have to compete fully against their opponents tonight because their opponents tonight are hungry. And uh, their opponents, I, I'm sure you guys are curious to know who they are, but it is the Chocolate Drops. The Chocolate Drops that... Uh, I personally never thought that they would be given a tag team title opportunity, but apparently FFW management felt different. And uh, so for Damian Wallace and Tyrone Jennings, they have a, a golden opportunity tonight against Bryson and Mark Lester. Now, so far, we've had one championship decided and the championship title holder retained. Now, will Bryson and Mark Lester retain? We don't know. We won't know until the end of this matchup, but as you see, uh, Damian Wallace on your left, Tyrone Jennings on your right, and you can truly see um, the the size difference here. Tyrone uh, Tyrone is probably about six foot eight, 282, 280 pounds. Uh, Damian Wallace barely six foot and uh, a little over 200 pounds. So they have speed and they have strength. Uh, in technical ring ability, neither one of these young men really. They're not, they're, not the, they're not Kurt Angle and they're not going to win the Olympic gold medals in 1996 with a broken neck. Uh, but they both do have a certain amount of wrestling ability. So for the Chocolate Drops, this is a huge opportunity because the Tag Team Championships are on the line tonight. They have a huge opportunity to beat Bryson and Mark Lester if Bryson and Mark Lester don't beat them first. So we're about we're going to get this underway and oh big right hand there from damian wallace and a, a series of right hands damian wallace coming with his a game tonight a series of slow methodical strikes to bryson and damian wallace missed wildly there's bryson sidestepped and moved out of the way but wallace here responding with strikes but the strength of of bryson over damian wallace is going to be a huge factor uh, Bryson weighs 200, almost 250 pounds. Uh, same with uh, Mark Lester. And uh, so Damian Wallace has to take that into consideration. He's at a fi at least a 50 pound disadvantage against both of these members of these teams. And uh, Damian Wallace, though, he's using his speed as, as a weapon. He, he's very wisely, uh, you know, picking his spots here as he's doing these maneuvers to Bryson. And, and Bryson is a big man. He's a big man when you're standing next to him. And wait a second, Bryson, oh, big DDT there. Just, and that could, that could snap your neck, ladies and gentlemen. 
And again, like I, like I was saying, Bryson is a big, he's a big boy. And uh, he takes a lot of pleasure in dropping a, a strong elbow right into your chest. But Damian Wallace is responding. He's not backing down, and that is what is so great. And now a quick Hurricane Rana hooking the legs here. One and a one count. And now Damian Wallace going to tag in the big man. Tyrone Jennings is in this matchup here. And now Tyrone Jennings grabbed Bryson by the hair and, oh, slammed him onto the mat. Nothing friendly about that. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't think that Tyrone really cares in that sense. I mean, look, look at what Tyrone is doing. He's grabbing the hair again and then, oh, an uppercut right to the back of the head. That's, that's not going to do anybody any favors. And now Damian Wallace back into this matchup. Oh, and Bryson going right after, after Tyrone. I don't think Bryson realized a, a tag was made, allowing Damian Wallace to hit that bulldog out of the corner. And right now, I, ladies and gentlemen, the chocolate drops, they are, they are on point. And I gotta, I really gotta hand it to, I gotta hand it to Damian Wallace and Tyrone Jennings because, like I, like I was saying, they are on point tonight. They are, they are emphatically keeping Bryson separated from Mark Wester. Although Bryson technically has more in-ring experience than Mark Wester, they're still doing phenomenally well right now as a tag team. And wait a second, what is? Oh, Damian Wallace just punched Bryson right in the chest. And, and Bryson just hit the mat. Bryson may be down and out, ladies and gentlemen. Wallace trying to shoot a half into the cover here, but Lester got in the ring, breaking up the pinfall attempt there. Oh, and a, a big left hook there. Allowing Bryson to get back into the driver's seat, ladies and gentlemen. And that is... That's what they needed right there. Now Bryson tagging in Mark Lester. Oh, but as you see, Damian Wallace, though, responding with a series of clubbing uh, chest chops there. And now Damian Wallace, I, like I said, Damian Wallace is, he's on point tonight, ladies and gentlemen. He is, he's coming with a plan. And oh, the big running form, that big running form, and Wall Damon Wallace backed up into their neutral, the neutral corner, and then jumped, you know, jumped back out at Mark Lester. He, he basically fooled Mark Lester there. Oh, and a big right hand from Tyrone Jennings. And now Tyrone Jennings shoving, shoving Mark Lester onto the mat there. Uh, Mark Lester here though he's trying to battle with the big man big right hand from Mark Lester to Tyrone Jennings sending sending Tyrone to the mat and then a, a seated elbow drop well, like I said I mean th we're these like the chocolate drops have been on point for Bryson and Mark Lester they a beautiful snap suplex but for Bryson and Mark Lester they just they got to get into a, a good routine here as uh, Tyrone and, and Damian are both doing phenomenally well here. And, oh, a slap right to the back of the head from Tyrone Jennings. Now Tyrone Jennings, oh, did you see that? That was like a falling backward release powerbomb, uh, an ollie oop, so to speak. As uh, Tyrone Jennings here just taking his time, but wait a second. Oh, Jennings gets a big hip toss for his troubles. And now, oh, a, a dirty eye rake. And, and this is, like, for Tyrone Jennings and Damian Wallace, I think that with the amount of time that they have spent, you know, being uh, ridiculed by the fans, I think that at this point they want to win the match, win the championships, and I don't think they care how they do it. Big right hand there from Mark Lester in a series of strikes on the on Tyrone Jennings. And I think, you know, I think for Mark Lester, he's starting to realize that they've got to, they got to do something if they want to, if they want to win this match and retain their tag team championships. Big suplex there from Tyrone Jennings. As you see Tyrone Jennings showing, flexing his muscles. 
possibly some of the biggest muscles in FFW. And oh, a beautiful standing drop kick there from, from Mark Lester to Tyrone Jennings. And a, oh, a seated spine buster going for the cover here. And not even a one count as Wallace quickly broke up that pinfall attempt. Damian Wallace didn't want to leave anything to chance tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And oh, a big forearm there from Tyrone Jennings. And now Tyrone Jennings has Mark Lester up and oh, slams Mark Lester right into the back of his head. Going for the cover here. One, two, almost a three count, but somehow, some way, Mark Lester was able to kick out. And then, oh, again, head first onto the mat. Wait a second. Oh, that's a, a very south of the border uh, fist from Tyrone Jennings. Now Tyrone Jennings has, oh, he had Lester above his head and threw him. And as you saw, Jennings went down onto one knee. The, I mean, Mark Lester is not a small man, ladies and gentlemen. He is a full-size heavyweight. He's not a small man. And Lester tags in Bryce and Bryce is coming in like he's got some fire under his behind knocking Jennings off of the apron there and then oh a big release T-bone suplex followed up by a big elbow drop there and like I said for Bryson and Mark Lester they got to realize that they've got to turn it up into high gear they, they have to have full speed ahead they can't they can't really rest on their laurels tonight as uh, they didn't plan on, can, on you know, defending their championships, but they have to defend them anyways. And as you see, though, right now, Bryson is doing what he should have been doing at the beginning of the match, and that is singling out Damian Wallace. And as you see, wait a second. Oh, Wallace, their big knee right to the... Oh, big super kick. That may be it. into the cover here and oh and Mark Lester was able to break it up and that super kick probably knocked Bryson into next week and then that standing spinning wheel kick and as you saw though uh, Damian Wallace quick not able to get back to his feet there he just when you run out of energy you run out of energy and that's just the way it is ladies and gentlemen you can only do so much against your opponents and a big forearm there from Bryson. But wait a second, Wallace counters. And whoa, Wallace again with another big super kick to, uh, to Bryson. And only a, a long two count there as Mark Lester at the last moment, at the very last moment was able to break it up. And, it, and I just, this is getting, this is a, has been a very intense matchup. And this is only the second match of the night. And this is the tag team championship. So, you know, normally, I'm not saying that tag team matches aren't interesting, but normally uh, tag team matches in FFW are not this interesting. But uh, this has been back and forth uh, to a certain extent, but Tyrone and Damian have definitely came into their own tonight. Now what is Tyrone going to do here? Tyrone, oh, another big spinning wheel kick there. Tyrone, oh, big flying forearm. Wait a second, Bryson counters with the side Russian leg sweep, and that's, they needed that. And now, as you see, uh, Bryson getting ready to tagging in Mark Lester there. And now a big back elbow. As you see, I mean, Bryson is just hanging there on the uh, on the ring apron. Big running drop kick. And what is? And look at as you see, Damian Wallace trying to. He's he's gasping for air. He's trying to catch his breath here, ladies and gentlemen. And wait a second. We saw this earlier. Oh, Damian Wallace punching the chest. And then, oh, that standing super kick. And as you saw, Damian Wallace went down to one knee, but going into the cover here. One, two, three, and that is all she wrote. We have new tag team champions, ladies and gentlemen. The chocolate drops 
for the first time ever in their wrestling, in their professional wrestling careers, have became tag team champions uh, after their, especially for Damian Wallace, a long, long three year journey uh, through TPP, through FFW, now to have gold around his waist. For the chocolate drops tonight, there's gonna be plenty of crunking and partying for these two. Uh, definitely deserves to be celebrated for these two, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're just getting this night underway, but we do have to get ready to take our first commercial break. So uh, we'll be back in just a few, min a few minutes. But again, congratulations to uh, Damian Wallace and Tyrone Jennings, the new FFW Tag Team Champions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in just a few moments, so sit tight, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of The Power Plant. What is evolution? Evolution is the process of change, development, and growth. TPP Frontline is change, development, and growth. And whether you want to believe that or not, it does not matter. Because ultimately, TPP Frontline is a lifestyle choice. And we're back here, folks, and we're out, we are in the midst of a night where every championship in FFW will be contested. Now, up next, we have the, mil the FFW Million Dollar Championship, a championship that was last contested in 1998 between Die Hard and Brandon Thompson, uh, the father of Riley Thompson, and Die Hard being the father of Anthony Guerrero Jr., who is our current FFW Million Dollar Champion. And, uh, you know, the fans definitely showing their support tonight for Anthony Guerrero Jr. And uh, for Jr., he, I, I assumed that because it was all going to be, I thought it was just going to be rematches. However, Riley Thompson is not in the arena tonight. So, therefore, Anthony Guerrero Jr. will be facing Kanji's cousin, Masuma. And that is going to be, this should be an interesting test for, uh, for Anthony Guerrero Jr. We have... Uh, another Japanese-born wrestler taking on a, an American-born wrestler, Anthony Guerrero Jr., trained by, uh, partially trained by his father, Die Hard, as well as uh, Jamie Hall uh, years ago. So this is going to be a good test uh, to see if Anthony Guerrero Jr. is a worthy champion. And I'm in, so far we've had one title retained and one title change. And this is going to be, we're 50-50 right now. We're going we're gonna to try to see if we can't sway that a little bit. Either Masuma is going to win and become the million dollar champion tonight or Anthony, Anthony Jr. is going to retain uh, his championship. Either way, I'm, th I'm thinking this is going to be a great matchup between Masuma and Anthony Jr. Uh, you know, both of these young men have uh, a lot of respect for one another. I don't think that there's any... Uh, ill will or bad blood between these two as, as far as I know and uh, you know I tend to be I tend to be in the loop of what's going on backstage and uh, so Masuma Anthony Guerrero Jr. the million dollar championship we're getting ready to get this matchup underway I'm excited I hope you guys are excited as you see the referee showing both of these young men uh, the million dollar championship Anthony Guerrero Jr. very proud to be the million dollar champion And uh, we're getting ready to get this matchup underway. Uh, Junior versus Masuma. Here we go. One fall to the finish. Disqualifications count. Submission counts. Uh, countouts count. Everything counts. And Masuma there sending Junior onto the apron in the early going of this matchup, bringing Junior in the hard way. And Junior countering from the ground. Now again, back into the standing tie-up. Junior into the side wrist lock here. And now into the rear hammer, hammer lock. And this is what I'm talking about. I mean, these, these young men, these, these gifted, gifted wrestlers, ladies and gentlemen. And Junior there, the stronger of the two, sending Masuma to the mat. 
Now Junior back into that side wrist lock. And Junior is, you know, Junior's came a long way. Uh, you know, I remember calling some of his first matches. They were nowhere near uh, as good as what they are now. And, and Junior now, oh, big uh, steamrolling clothesline there from Anthony Guerrero Jr. And like I was saying, I mean, I'm very impressed with how Anthony Guerrero Jr. has changed over the past uh, couple of years. He went from being... Um, you know, I don't, for lack of a better term, he, he wasn't a top tier competitor. And after his, his matchup against uh, Riley Thompson at Endgame, uh, that was just a, a bloody brawl between those two. That was, there was blood everywhere, uh, all over both of those young men, all over their bodies. And uh, they literally set a new, sta a new standard for the both of them. They, they made people understand that they are the real deal. They're not. They're not to be taken lightly. And as you see, Junior here getting back into a, a momentous position. And this is what I love seeing. I, I love I love this high octane action. A big head kick there from Asuma. And and Masuma is just having his way right now with with, uh, with Anthony Jr. And for Junior, he's got to figure he's got to figure something out. He's got to get a routine going because if Masuma if, if Masuma starts going, that is when this matchup could end in a bad way for Junior. Junior could be um, a flash in the pan, so to speak, when it comes to being the champion. And, and you know that Junior doesn't want that to happen. And uh, I can, oh, and Junior missed wildly with that springboard as Masuma jumped underneath it, allowing Masuma to get back into uh, a momentous position. But, oh, Junior, big rotating uh, forearm there. I'm not really sure what to call that, but Junior definitely made sure it worked for him. And, oh, Junior put all of his body weight into that one all of his body weight and uh, it, it, it took down Masuma just long just for a one count though quick uppercut there from Anthony Jr. kick to the abdomen from Masuma here and Masuma though like I like I was saying I mean Masuma showing great uh, in-ring ability I mean, he's not showing any he's literally doing everything what you would think he would do. Now what is Masuma? Quick uppercut there. Junior went hard to the mat after that backhand. Into the cover and a Junior quickly, quickly got his shoulders out the map. As you see Junior very slow to his feet. Oh Masuma got caught there by Anthony Junior. Wait a second, Junior Misses with a running drop kick, allowing Masuma to capitalize. What is Masuma thinking here? Masuma jumps in, big diving elbow. And like I was saying, I mean, Masuma showing a very unique style tonight. He, he's showing that he's got amazing wrestling ability, but Junior turning it around back into his favor here another beautiful standing drop kick there for Anthony Jr as Masuma pulling himself up I will say that I will I will say this though Jr is showing amazing um, presence tonight in the ring you know even though he didn't know who he was going to be going against. He's still doing phenomenal. As you see, Junior now setting up these kicks, and that is what you've got to do. You got to, you've got to wear your opponent down. And, but Masuma was able to get back to his feet.
this is thus far has been very back and forth between Anthony Jr. and Masuma. They're both picking their spots, taking their time, and I think that's what you know makes this such a exciting. It's not a very fast-paced match. It's not. A, oh, but Jr. with the pulse checker out of nowhere. Junior going for the cover here. One, two, three, and that is all she wrote. That pulse checker literally came out of nowhere. I had Junior just literally within the blink of an eye, he hit the pulse checker, and uh, Masuma was unable to get his shoulders off the mat before the three count. And unfortunately, if you can't get your shoulders up before that three count, that means that you lose the match. And, for, for Anthony Jr. tonight, he successfully retains uh, his million dollar championship here in FFW. Uh, it remains to be seen though, will Jr. be able to overcome all of his obstacles that he will be faced throughout time? And uh, so now the odds have changed. It is no longer a 50-50 split, ladies and gentlemen. We have had two title retentions tonight and one title change. And I... You know, either way, I would have been happy with either Masuma would have won or Anthony Jr. I'm glad that Jr. did retain his championship tonight. Congratulations goes out to Jr. It was a, it was a hard-fought victory for Jr., so congratulations again. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the co-main event of the evening. And this was almost, this is the runner-up match of the night for Endgame right here. And this is a rematch that I'm definitely looking forward to. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. Uh, we've got Rollin Ryder, the, the reigning, defending FFW internet champion, taking on his former tag team partner, former friend, and, and Darren Trinidad. So for Rollin Ryder, he's got to come out swinging tonight. I, it, it was almost pure luck for Rollin Ryder to walk away with the championship at Endgame. He's got to be able to make that happen again tonight going against Darren Trinidad. Now, will will Ryder be able to do that? We don't know. I mean, for Rollin Ryder, you know he wants to, to retain. But you know that Darren Trinidad wants to get some gold around his waist. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing wrong with that. You know, Rollin Ryder wants to um, be known as the best. And there's, there's no shame in wanting to be known as the best. None at all. However, Ryder needs to keep in mind there's plenty of other wrestlers in the backstage area that believe that they could be the best. And so, for Rollin Ryder, he's got a very big uh, target placed on his back. And tonight, he's got to be able to take out his former tag team partner. Uh, you know, they traveled the road together. They did everything together. Uh, the diary, literally, uh, the Diary of a Madman is playing over the PA system right now, at, or Diary of a Madman, and that explains Darren Trinidad to a T. As you see, Darren Trinidad, though, growing out his facial hair, not not just rocking the clean-shaven look anymore, and, and there's there's no nothing wrong with that at all. And for Darren Trinidad, you know he. Darren Trinidad's looking to, you know, get something good going in his favor tonight. He, I think Darren Trinidad is tired of people looking at him like he's second best or the second runner up. Darren Trinidad is an amazing, amazing in-ring competitor. An amazing, gifted, uh, hard, he, he, he was trained in a hardcore type environment. However, this young man, don't be fooled by the hardcore tendencies. He, he is a very gifted, gifted wrestler. Darren Trinidad is probably one of the most gifted wrestlers that I've had the pleasure of calling matches for uh, over the course of a long time. And I can't wait to get this matchup underway. Darren Trinidad, Rollin Ryder, the internet championship, a rematch from, from Endgame. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys are ready because I know I am. And uh, I'm excited to get this matchup underway as you see the referee showing them both the uh the internet championship this is this is a big deal you know this is this is big for both of these young men
And so here we go, Rollin Ryder, Darren Trinidad, FFW Internet Championship. Here we go, standing tie-up. And Ryder gets the better of the situation with the side headlock, followed up by that takedown. And now, look at that. Trinidad turns it around in his favor. And that is what I love seeing, ladies and gentlemen. I love seeing that. And again, right back into the standing tie-up. And again, Rollin Ryder gets the better of the situation there. But Trinidad turns it around. And now Trinidad bringing Ryder to the mat. And this is Matt Wrestling 101, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and a big elbow right, to the, right to, the, to the side of the head and the ear. Ooh, big back chop there. Oh, and, and as you see, Rollin Ryder here, big right hand, sending Trinidad to the mat. And this is... This is what makes these wrestlers so unique. They all have something special to give. And uh, I think between everybody that's competed thus far tonight, I think this is probably going to be the match of the night. I mean, we're talking, these are two guys that are amazing in-ring competitors. Trinidad going for an early cover here, one. Only a one count on the current internet champion. And I say current internet champion because that can all change. That can all change after tonight. Darren Trinidad could become the internet champion. Trinidad, oh, springboards, throws his body right into Rollin, right there into the cover again. One, and a, a long one count there. But Ryder, savvy enough to turn it around into his favor. And as you see, look at this. Ryder stomping right on the chest. And uh, Trinidad there able to counter from the ground. Big right hand. Now Trinidad out of the corner with the big DDT. And as you saw, I mean, Trinidad was shaking, getting himself, keeping himself warmed up there and went for a quick uh, backdrop cover there, but it, uh, unfortunately, Ryder was able to kick out. And now what's Trinidad? Trinidad from the top rope with that big senton hooking the legs. One, and only a, a, a one count there as a, uh, the refusal to stay down is what uh, we're going to call that. And a beautiful half Nelson suplex there. And again, that leaping senton. And this is what I love. Like these, the way that these young men compete is just, there's no quit between any of these. And, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is a no disqualification matchup. So anything goes in this, in this environment. There could be tables, there could be ladders, and there can be chairs, oh my. And as you see Ryder here, series of big right hands, sending, sending Trinidad to the mat. Now, what is Ryder thinking here? Ryder now looking to get some hardware. Ryder went with it, but Trinidad able to drop kick the baseball bat out of his hands. Luckily for, uh, for Darren Trinidad, a baseball bat can do a lot of damage, ladies and gentlemen, a lot. Now Trinidad setting up, uh, setting up a ladder there. Trinidad climbing up the ladder here. Trinidad thinking about something. Not sure what Trinidad's thinking, but 
Trinidad may have, uh, may have thought twice there instead of climbing up on top of the ladder and then jumping off. He, I think he realized he may end his career a lot sooner than he had planned for if he, uh, if he were to do that. But I, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, seeing these two in the ring together, again, you know, it just it makes it such an interesting environment. And Trinidad jumps to the outside there, that front flip over the top rope, throwing caution to the wind. As you see, Trinidad trying to get Ryder back in the ring. Ryder's looking to maybe get something to help him out along the way. And, and here we go. Now the steel chair. Misses wildly, but Ryder grabs it out of his hands. And, oh, Trinidad eats a steel chair right to the face. As you see, though, Darren Trinidad, although possibly completely out of it, he's still he's still fighting, ladies and gentlemen. The Rollin Ryder showing no no fear whatsoever. He's he's stepping up to Darren Trinidad tonight, and oh, as you saw, as you heard there, Rollin Ryder went. Right into that ladder there, but wait a second. Trinidad power bombed to Ryder. The back of Ryder's head hit that ladder into the cover here. One and a, a long one count. A very, very long. Oh, and another DDT. And for Rollin Ryder, he's taking a lot of damage on the top of his head here uh, from, uh, from Darren Trinidad. Darren Trinidad has made a beeline for the skull. And Trinidad, oh, just caught him in a modified hip toss here into the cover. One, two, and a long, long two count, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and a big back chop. What is Trinidad thinking? Trinidad now, uh, just moving some of the hardware out of here. As you see, Ryder trying to pull himself back up to his feet, but wait a second. Oh, big back chop there from Trinidad, followed up by another one. And now what is Trinidad doing going to the top rope? High risk here, big diving senton. And another two count. Darren Trinidad. Trinidad wants this tonight. Tri wait, oh, that double underhook DDT there. Trinidad hooking the far leg here. One, two, almost a three count. Somehow, some way, Rollin Ryder was able to get his shoulders off the mat. That, that was just, wow, I, I'm actually kind of blown away by that. I didn't think that uh, that would happen, but it did. Rollin Ryder, though, not backing down to Mike. He is, he is pushing. Trinidad, it looks like Ryder may be busted open there. One, two, and a long two count again for Rollin Ryder, or for Darren Trinidad.
As you see, though, Rollin Ryder getting back to his feet as Darren Trinidad, or Rollin Ryder had the baseball bat as Trinidad was getting back to his feet. You, now using that baseball bat as a weapon and uh, as a clotheslining weapon. Oh, and Rollin Ryder on one knee here into the cover. One, two. And a long two count, but somehow Darren Trinidad able to get his shoulders off the mat. And oh, Rollin Ryder side rush and leg sweep there. I mean, I gotta hand it to Rollin Ryder. He is he's hanging in here, ladies and gentlemen. He is doing what a champion should do. He is fighting. Followed up by that big Samba suplex. Into the cover here. One, two, and a two count as Ryder somehow, some way, got his shoulders off the mat. Now Trinidad has that baseball bat in hand. Oh, Trinidad swinging for the fences. As you see, though, uh, Darren Trinidad. He is in the zone tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a second. Mm, that modified kind of uh, clover leaf followed by a, a backbreaker. And as you see, Trinidad, though, going to the top rope. Jumps off big body senton. Going for the cover here. One, two, and only a two count. Oh, and a big flying clothesline. Again, going for the cover and only a one count that time. Trinidad, beautiful standing uh, drop tip there. Oh, and a big right hand. Now Trinidad, beautiful snap suplex right on the corner of that baseball bat. And Trinidad, oh, is, oh, Ryder ran right into that modified hip toss maneuver. Into the cover here, one, two, and another two count for Darren Trinidad. Trinidad has got to be trying to close in on the kill here. And now Trinidad, wait a second, Trinidad looking, that double underhook, and then the DDT. Trinidad crawling into the cover here. One, two, three, and Darren Trinidad has became the new FFW internet champion tonight. Congratulations goes out to Darren Trinidad, ladies and gentlemen, that was a meticulously back and forth matchup between the two of those young men. I mean, they back and forth the entire time. I mean, it was almost tit for tat. And uh, for Darren Trinidad, it culminated for him tonight. It didn't culminate at Endgame, but tonight, just as good as, uh, you know, Darren Trinidad, now the FFW Internet Champion. Congratulations again, Darren Trinidad. You deserve it tonight. And for Rollin Ryder, it was just a tough break, a pure exhaustion in that matchup. And ladies and gentlemen, we have to take our final commercial break of the night. We will be back in just a few moments. So sit tight, everyone. Hi, I'm Christopher Billings, the voice of the power plant. What is it that the power plant offers that no other company offers? A state-of-the-art training facility where wrestlers can utilize their many gifts and many talents to truly evolve and practice and hone their skills, which can then bring them onto a main show roster. But it doesn't come easy. These are trained professional athletes and the risks are very real. So from everybody in the power plant, please do not attempt this at home. Do not attempt this in your backyard on a trampoline. And remember, watching TPP Frontline, it is a lifestyle choice.
And we're back here, folks, and it is time for the main event of the evening. And it comes without saying that tonight has been a very special night, and uh, I hate to see it end, but, you know, all good things have to come to an end eventually. And uh, so we get to see our FFW champion in action, Jerry Grant, uh, a man that has overcome so many obstacles uh, throughout his career when he first began uh, in uh, the ranks of Die Hard's TCO, uh, his group's TCO, and he's went through that to being an AMD, to being a lone wolf, to now being the reigning FFW champion, to being a highly sought after competitor, especially coming out of TPP into FFW. And for Jerry Graham, it's been a battle to get where he's gotten to be. And for Jerry Graham, it's something that he takes great pride in. And uh, I think, I honestly think that Jerry Graham will, I think he's a great champion. I think that he is one of the best champions of our time. And uh, I mean, there's a short list of great champions in my books. And uh, there's a few that I hold very near and dear. But Jerry Graham is definitely in that top four. And uh, so Jerry Graham's got a unique opponent tonight. Originally, Jerry Graham's matchup at Endgame was a triple threat uh, against Atlas, Adam D. Whitmore, and himself. Uh, but then it, because Atlas had gotten himself injured, it became a one-on-one -on -one against this young man, Adam D. Whitmore. And for Adam D. Whitmore, this is, I, I always say this, but this could be his, his last opportunity to get to compete for the FFW Championship, but management keeps putting Whitmore in this position. And I, I think that that's great. Adam D. Whitmore is a great, a great, great in-ring competitor. I think that this young man has a bright future ahead of him. He's, I, I've said this numerous times, but when he was five years old, he knew that he wanted to be a professional wrestler. That is, that is what Adam D. Whitmore was all about. He was all about, he's all, been all about wrestling his entire life. And that's all it takes. Uh, that passion and that drive and he's got the skills he, he has the skills and the ability to uh to win the, the the main championship it just remains to be seen if it will happen tonight and like i said i mean this this could be his last opportunity you know for the ffw championship and adam d whitmore you know he's weighs in at about 240 pounds or so out of out of connecticut Jerry Graham out of Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at about 245, 250 pounds. So this is a very evenly uh, weight distributed match. I mean, these two are evenly matched when it comes to weight. Uh, maybe not strength lifting, because I, I, I do believe that Jerry Graham may be stronger. But other than that, I mean, they're, they're pretty close in uh, proximity. I mean, of course, Adam D. Whitmore, a uh, very gifted amateur wrestler, a very gifted professional wrestler. Jerry Graham, a very gifted professional wrestler, not much amateur wrestling for background. Uh, but for Whitmore, it's been his entire life. So Adam D. Whitmore, Jerry Graham, FFW Championship, one more time, here we go. And Whitmore starts things with the, the rear waist lock, and Jerry Graham turns it around into a rear waist lock of his own, bringing Whitmore onto the mat. And this is, this is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I love seeing there's such uh, between these wrestlers such competition and, and now Adam D. Whitmore gets himself in an, in, a, in an advantage position and now Whitmore into the side headlock here and Jerry Graham wrestling himself out into the side headlock and now Jerry Graham a big close fist punch there oh and oh Jerry Graham Kind of snuck that one in with that wrist lock and that kick right to the back of the chin, just underneath the chin there. Not, a, not even a one count, but still a, almost an underhanded tactic from Jerry Graham. Jerry Graham, big running shoulder tackle there. And now what is Jerry Graham thinking here? Jerry Graham's got to do something. He's got to, Jerry Graham ducks that, and oh, big clothesline there. And as you hear, a mixed reaction from the fans in attendance tonight. Into the cover here. Not even a one count again. At least, at least the will for Adam D. Whitmore to win is strong tonight. And now Whitmore, oh, that, thr that throat thrust. And now, a, 
Ooh, a beautiful uh, northern lights there. He did not do the, the pinning bridge like he normally does, but he did do the northern lights. Now Jerry Graham responds with a throat thrust of his own. And, and Adam D. Whitmore tripping up Jerry Graham. And that, that's what I'm talking, this is what I'm talking about. I mean, these, these two young men, um, you know, I, I guess I shouldn't say super young men, but because uh, Jerry Graham's about the same age as I am. But uh, regardless, uh, these, these men, they have everything to gain and everything to lose in this matchup. Uh, you know, in, in Adam D. Whitmore's case, he's got every, he's, he doesn't really have anything to lose. He's got everything to gain. He, he's got a championship to gain. And for Jerry Graham, he's got a championship he can lose. And if he wins, but barely wins, it would be could possibly hurt his future career. But, ooh, big uppercut there from Adam D. Whitmore. And as you see here, oh, and a big forearm there from Jerry Graham and a forearm from Adam D. Whitmore. And Jerry Graham, a kick right to the abdomen. And, oh, a big right hand. And the, the fans in attendance here are not... Sh uh, they're not really showing that they care too much for Jerry Graham right now, and and that's surprising because uh, he is a highly sought after champion. Uh, you know, he's a great in-ring competitor, and maybe uh, you know, it, oh, and a big punch right to the ribs there, sending Jerry Graham from the top rope. But maybe the fans have just grown tired of the stagnant Jerry Graham. I don't know. I I personally enjoy watching Jerry Graham compete, but uh, this crowd tonight. Very rambunctious, uh, not afraid to let their voices be heard. And uh, right now they're letting their voices be heard in this matchup. As, uh, as now Jerry Graham turns the tide back into his favor. And Jerry Graham here setting up that third jumping elbow. Into the cover here, not even a one count. As uh, Whitmore, the fight in Whitmore tonight is so strong, and then that spine buster from Jerry Graham. As you see, Jerry Graham looking around at the fans, like, why are you booing me? And uh, Adam D. Whitmore, though, is starting to get some cheers from the fans, which is ironic, um, because these two play two different roles here. Um, Adam D. Whitmore would technically be the bad guy in this situation, side belly to belly there, and Jerry Graham would be uh, the hero in this situation. However, uh, right now it, it seems as though uh, they've switched roles almost, and uh, Jerry Graham now counters side rush and leg sweep. And this has been a very back and forth matchup here. And now Jerry Graham, big right hand, and oh, and Whitmore responds with three big right hands, sending Jerry Graham to the mat. And Jerry Graham again with the big right hand. Whitmore sending him into the ropes. And oh, a big back drop there. Followed up by that forearm. Oh, and a big humper cut there from Jerry Graham as a Whitmore now getting back to his feet. Whitmore, big clothesline. Another big clothesline. And ooh, a standing sidekick. And Jerry Graham gonna roll to the outside there, buy himself a little bit of reprieve. But Whitmore giving chase. And now bringing Jerry Graham back into the ring. Adam D. Whitmore. Oh, and a, a big clubbing left hand from Jerry Graham. And another spine buster. And again, the fans overwhelmingly booing Jerry Graham right now. And uh, I don't think Jerry Graham knows what to do. Um, he's not used to being, I mean, the last time Jerry Graham was booed like this was in 2012. That was over two years ago uh, when he did not have any fan support at all. And when he started to gain fan support is when he left the ranks of TCO. And now, wait a second, Jerry Graham. This is the trifecta of power bombs here. There's the second power bomb. And the third power bomb there, and Jerry Graham two one knee here, looking around at the fans. And now Jerry Graham, big running clothesline again. And 
And again, a mixed crowd reaction right now. We're hearing cheers and boos all at the same time. Jerry Graham calling Adam D. Whitmore to his feet. And now Jerry Graham, who calls this move the saving grace, ladies and gentlemen, the crucifix power bomb. Jerry Graham has Whitmore on his shoulders and jack knifes him. Again, down on one knee into the cover here. One, two, three, almost a three count, but somehow Adam D. Whitmore kicks out and we saw Jerry Graham look very, very frustrated, just dumping Adam D. Whitmore over with that suplex. And as you hear, the fans in attendance are not necessarily, they're cheering Jerry Graham, but they're not cheering Jerry Graham. And so for Jerry Graham, this has got to be one of those moments where he's got to be getting pretty angry or upset. Two, and another two, or a two count for Adam D. Whitmore and Jerry Graham as Jerry Graham slowly starting to get to his feet. And now Jerry Graham, oh, that short arm clothesline. Again, you can just hear the fans overwhelmingly booing. Now Jerry Graham pounding away with his elbows. Sending Whitmore into the corner. Oh, and out of the other corner there and to a quick hip toss. And again, I mean, Jerry Graham not even trying for pinfall attempts right now. He's just trying to onslaught pain to Adam D. Whitmore in the big DDT. Into the cover here. One, two, then almost a three count, but again, Adam D. Whitmore able to get his shoulders off the mat. And for Jerry Graham, you know Jerry Graham has got to be getting pretty frustrated right now, ladies and gentlemen. As, uh, as you see, he's talking to the fans who are not uh, giving uh, so much of a happy approach to Jerry Graham. I mean, you can hear some of the fans trying to come through and trying to sound positive, but unfortunately for Jerry Graham, this is, uh, this is not turning out to be the night that he thought it would be, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and a big knee there from Jerry Graham. And a big clothesline there. I and mean, you can see that Jerry Graham is very frustrated. I mean, you can see the frustration building. Jerry Graham looks very angry right now. I, I can see it in his eyes. I can, I can almost feel it, ladies and gentlemen. He, he looks like he's very angry right now. And... Um, Ooh, that gut buster there. And honestly, I, I, I can kind of understand Jerry Graham's frustration right now. He's, he wants to defend this title successfully. And wait a second, Jerry Graham might be looking for uh, the three power bombs. There's one, two, and Jerry Graham with the third power bomb there. Again, dropping down to one knee. And now, wait a second, Jerry Graham looking for a second saving grace here. Oh, and a jackknifing those shoulders. Two, three, and Jerry Graham has retained his FFW championship. But surprisingly enough, the fans do not sound very impressed right now. And, and Jerry Graham, not looking like, uh, I mean, he's definitely happy that he defended his championship, but ladies and gentlemen, he's not looking like uh, he's too happy. As you hear, I mean, we can hear some of the fans cheering. We can hear them cheering, ladies and gentlemen. But not everyone is cheering. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. 
on uh, our return to YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Christopher Billings. This has been FFW Genesis. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to tune in next week, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, take care of yourselves. Have a good night and be safe.